Hi again, Bill Pfeiffer. Very, very good to be with you, Mary's Field. If you like the story, it's one of my favorites that you're going to hear. Uh, feel free to share it uh, with, with others. That you can touch other people's lives often by stories. Huh? And this will give you an opportunity to be able to, to be a change agent in the, in, in the people that, uh, with whom you live and the people uh, around you. Don't be bashful. Don't be embarrassed by sharing. Huh? I call this one the, the Daffodil Principle. Really an important, beautiful story. Several times, my daughter telephoned to say, Mother, you must come to see the daffodils before they are gone. I wanted to go, but it was a two-hour drive from Laguna to Lake Arrowhead. I will come next Tuesday, I promised reluctantly on her third call. Next Tuesday dawned cold and rainy. Still, I had promised, and so I went. When I finally walked into Carolyn's house and hugged my grandchildren, I said, Forget the daffodils, Carolyn. The road is invisible in the clouds and fog, and there is nothing in the world I want to see except you and my grandchildren. I don't want to drive another inch. My daughter smiled calmly. We drive in this fog all the time, Mother. How far will we have to drive? Just a few blocks, Carolyn said, and I'll drive. I'm used to it. After several minutes, I had to ask, where are we going? We're going to my garage the long way, Carolyn smiled, by way of the daffodils. It's all right, Mother. I promise you will never forgive yourself if you miss this experience. After about 20 minutes, we turned onto a small gravel road, and I saw a small church. On the far side of the church, I saw a hand-lettered sign, Daffodil Garden. We got out of the car, and each of us took a child's hand. I followed Carolyn down the path, then we turned a corner on the path, and I looked up and gasped. Before me lay the most gorgeous sight. It looked as though someone had taken a great vat of gold and poured it down over the mountain peak and slopes. The flowers were planted in majestic swirling patterns, great ribbons and swaths of deep orange, white, lemon, yellow, salmon pink, saffron, and butter yellow. Each different colored variety was planted as a group so that it swirled and flowed like its own river with its own unique hue. Five acres of flowers. But who has done this? I asked Carolyn. It's just one woman, Carolyn answered. She lives on the property. That's her home, Carolyn pointed to a well-kept A-frame house that looks small and modest in the midst of all that glory. We walked up to the house. On the patio, we saw a poster. Answer to the questions I know you are asking was the headline. The first answer was a simple one, 50,000 bulbs. The second answer was one at a time by one woman, two hands, two feet, and very little brain. The third answer was began in 1958. There it was. The Daffodil Principle. For me, that moment was a life-changing experience. Hopefully for yourself as well, huh? A life-changing experience. I thought of this woman whom I had never met, who more than 35 years before had begun one bulb at a time to bring her vision of beauty and joy to an obscure mountaintop. Planting just one bulb at a time, year after year, had changed the world. This unknown woman had forever changed the world in which she lived. She had created something of ineffable magnificence, beauty, and inspiration. The principle her garden, Daffodil Garden, taught us is one of the greatest principles of life. Learning to move toward our goals and desires one step at a time, often just one baby step at a time, learning to love the doing, learning to use the passage of time. When we multiply tiny pieces of time with small increments of daily effort, we too will find we can accomplish magnificent things. We can change the world. Meister Eckhart once said, little by little, we grow, but we do grow. It means make the decisions, huh? It makes me sad in a way, I admitted to Carolyn. What might I have accomplished 
If I had thought of a wonderful goal 35 years ago and had worked away at it one bulb at a time, just think what I might have been able to achieve. My daughter summed up the message that day in her direct way. Start today, she said. Not to decide is to decide. Who you are going to be tomorrow, you are becoming today. What is it that you're holding back that keeps you from becoming all that you're called to be, all that you're called to be for others? Make that decision today. Don't beat around the bush. Just do it, and you'll end up reaping the results of, of, of that decision for years to come, and all of the people around you will as well. Remember, always, your happiness tomorrow truly, truly depends on what you do today. God bless. Good to be with you.